Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend. Happy Monday. It's a beautiful day out here in Virginia Beach. Nice and hot. How is it where you are? So this is Jess from the Keto Fit Weight Loss Coaching for Women. And I'm back live with you guys on this beautiful Monday morning to give you the keto tip of the week. And the tip that I want to share with you guys today is to plan your substitutions. Now, uh, I'm not going to just get on here and talk about all the different really cool keto substitutions that you can do because you can Google that. Um, there's a lot of great people out there doing that, um, you know. You can do cauliflower rice instead of rice or cauliflower mash instead of potatoes or zucchini noodles instead of pasta, right? So we're kind of familiar with some of these, but that's not the main focus of what I want today to be about. But rather, I wanna look at planning your substitutions from the aspect of habit change or successful habit change. So um, some of the uh, illustrations that I'm gonna share with you guys today are from an amazing book that I read. I highly recommend it. It's called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And uh, when I talk about planning your substitutions, meaning what are you going to eat uh, to eat this instead of eat that, uh, really it's about changing your habits. So in order to have a really successful habit change, there are three aspects to consider about a habit and what a habit is. So a habit is made of three parts. There's the cue or the trigger, so you could say either. So there's the cue, there's the behavior itself, and then there's the reward. And so very, very important to think about all three of these things because oftentimes when we're talking about habits, we only focus on the behavior itself um, and not taking into account the cue or the trigger and then the subsequent, subsequent reward. So um, I am a big, big fan of what I like to call the keto crutch. Uh, or having keto crutches, especially in the beginning, because when you're making a lifestyle change, like moving from eating a high carb diet to a low carb diet, uh, it can be really overwhelming and it can be really, really difficult to take that on all at once. And in the beginning, you really are kind of relying on a lot of uh, willpower until uh, your body takes over and transitions into ke the magic of ketosis, as I like to call it, where um, now your body's kind of working for you instead of against you. Your appetite gets suppressed, you get higher energy levels, so on and so forth. Um, ketosis is amazing, but in the beginning, um, it does feel really difficult to just be solely focused on, okay, um, don't eat this, we're gonna do this instead. So we're gonna do these substitutes instead of the things that we're normally used to eating. So um, again, let's get back into the idea of what a habit is. There's the cue, there's the behavior, and then there's the reward. So I'll give a very specific example. Um, in my house, uh, prior to me going keto, it was very uh, habitual to have dinner and then to watch TV and eat after dinner. And sometimes, most likely, eating even more food after dinner than what was consumed during dinner. Just mindless eating, um, eating out of craving, uh, emotional eating, and eating out of boredom, really. just So for me, the cue was, or the trigger was, uh, watching TV and um, winding down at the end of the day. So a trigger or a cue can be time of day. It could also be an emotion. It could be um, really anything. It's just a pattern in your day that repeats over and over again or a pattern in your life that repeats over and over again and you find yourself that whenever this cue or this trigger arises, this is my go-to behavior. So for me, it was watching TV after dinner was the cue or that so watching TV itself was the cue and also time of day was the cue. And so the behavior was eating all of the things, <laughs> eating something sweet, then eating something salty, eating something sweet, eating something salty. And the reward was this tastes good. Um, numbing out, um, kind of like numbing the emotions of the day or just winding down from the day. It felt relaxing to be able to watch TV. It was also rewarding because I was doing it together with my husband and so we were connecting at the end of the day. So I was getting several different rewards out of that um, along with uh, the dopamine hit of uh, things tasting good and um, even just the, the pleasure itself from, from eating, the taste of it, the feel of it, so on and so forth problem was 
uh, that reward very quickly wears off instantly filled with regret before I go to bed still filled with regret and shame when I wake up the next morning and it was a really horrible habit entered the keto crutch <laughs> so for me my husband and I used to eat a lot of nachos after dinner so I decided I'm, I'm going on low carb and now it's dinner it, we had a great dinner successful low carb dinner now we're watching TV and my husband makes a plate of nachos and I am seething with resentment on the inside. What are you doing to me? Uh, but of course, you know, he can live his life and I'm gonna live mine. So what, what did I do? I had to have a substitution. So for me, it was making pork rind nachos. Um, you might think, okay, that sounds disgusting, but <laughs> and it honestly wasn't that great. I'm not even the biggest fan of pork rinds. They've come a long way from what they are. Uh, what they were in 2013 so there's a lot of cool different flavors and stuff like that that you can do now but anyway for me that was what worked though um, I needed to have a substitution and it needed to be um, not just something that didn't fit with what I was doing before it had to be for me it had to be eating something that was a substitute so a lot of times I'll see people uh, say like okay well I'm just not gonna just not gonna eat at all after dinner okay great but um, it, that might not be the most realistic thing at the beginning because it doesn't fit in with um, here's the cue, here's the behavior, here's the reward. So some people will say, well, I'm just not going to eat I'm, while I'm watching TV. I'm going to knit instead. Okay, that's great, right? So you're trying to keep yourself busy. You're trying to do something with your hands. Um, you've, you've got the cue and now you're going to do a replacement behavior. But what about the reward? So the reward, in order for you to successfully change habits, the reward has to be similar in and of itself. So the reward of knitting is completely different than the reward of eating. So it's just something to consider. Um, recently, I've had a client who wanted to give up drinking. Um, no moral issues here, it's not anything about that, but um, drinking alcohol, even if it's zero carb, it can really slow your weight loss. Um, Side note, you know, did you know that uh, alcohol itself is actually a form of fuel? Your body treats it as a form of fuel, and there's an order of priority for your body to burn certain fuels. So your body will always burn alcohol first, and then it will burn any carbs that you give it, and then it will burn fat as the last resort. So even though you are eating a keto diet, you're restricting carbs, your body is in fat burning mode, every time you introduce alcohol, it's going to burn that fuel source first, and it um, may slow down your weight loss efforts. So this client wanted to give up um, drinking alcohol. So again, we looked at the cue or the trigger, um, the behavior itself, and then the reward. So for her, her cue was time of day. So having a nightcap uh, every single night was a habit and it was something that really relaxed her. So we were exploring what are the rewards that you're getting out of this? Okay, it tastes good. Um, you're doing it together with your spouse. So you guys are connecting at the end of the day. Um, it feels good in your hand to hold that wine glass. It's comforting. Um, and uh, another reward that you're getting out of it is that it is really relaxing you. It's de-stressing you, right? So we had to come up with what is a replacement behavior that we can do. And we can't change the cue. You can't change time of day. You know, like a lot of times this is something else that really gets people deviated from successful habit change is trying to change the trigger. Like, okay, well, if I'm going to stop drinking, I just need my life not to be so stressful, right? Okay, good luck with that, right? Um, it's so much easier to change the behavior itself than to try to change the cue. Uh, everybody will have stress in their lives forever and always, right? Of course, we can try to mitigate some of those things. We can get into that. But when we're talking about successful habit change, the most important thing to focus on is the replacement behavior. So you can't change the cue. Think about the behavior itself drinking, which is something that you don't want to do. And then what is the reward? Okay. So in order to come up with a replacement behavior, we needed to explore everything about the reward. It tastes good. It's something I'm doing together with my spouse and it's relaxing me. Okay. So what can we do instead that will still achieve those same levels of reward? So we explored that together. Um, still wanted to be able to have that habit of holding a wine glass in your hand with something that tastes good. So enter LaCroix, right? So that was her choice. She wanted to have like a sparkling um, water. So she put LaCroix in the wine glass. So now we've got that. We're doing it. We're still sitting together with the husband at the end of the day, connecting, still getting that out of it. 
and LaCroix is not gonna relax you, so what can you do instead that's also going to provide that relaxation? And so she added on um, taking, uh, going into her hot tub every night. So that was a successful habit change for her. So today we've been talking about planning your substitutions, not just from the typical aspect of, okay, I'm going to you know, make a keto uh, brownie instead of having a regular brownie or whatever that may be, although I'm a big fan of those keto crutches. Uh, what I hope to get you guys thinking about today is planning your substitutions from the aspect of successful habit change. Um, one more really quick example, um, and for me, uh, was every time I would go see a movie with my husband, which we did a lot of, I felt n the need to have a movie snack, right? And so typically we would always stop at 7-Eleven beforehand and get candy, whatever it might be, hide it in the purse, you know. Um, so for me, one thing that was really, really helpful was pumpkin seeds. So uh, you can eat them slowly, you have to crack the shell open, it would last me the entire movie, I didn't feel deprived, I had a substitute, it was the same cue going to see a movie, the same, uh, well, changing the behavior from eating high carb snacks uh, to something low carb, because I wanted that salty popcorn, so instead I chose something that would give me the same type of reward. I get to eat something during a movie, it tastes salty, it tastes good, it's keeping me busy, I don't feel deprived. It was a really successful habit change. So I hope that this has been helpful. Again, my name is Jess and I'm from the Keto Fit Weight Loss Coaching for Women. And today we've been talking about planning your substitutions. It's the Keto Tip of the Week. And I'm gonna be coming at you guys live uh, again tomorrow and every day this week to um, keep giving you a little bit more information about who I am and what kind of uh, services that I offer. So I am a weight loss coach for women. I help women lose weight with a keto diet and mindset and motivation coaching. I'm going to be uh, launching a new round of group coaching the week after Labor Day. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. The deadline to apply for that is September 1st. To get started, all that you need to do is send me a direct message. So I'm at the Keto Fit on Instagram and on Facebook. And I really look forward to talking with you and getting to know you. I offer a free curiosity call. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes at a time that's good for you and you can get to know me and I can get to know you and we can talk about any questions that you might have. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well if you're interested. So thanks so much for tuning in today, guys, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.